Once upon a time, two friends joined forces to bring you the best in horror entertainment. Brian from the north, Tim from the south, each bringing their own unique perspective to the horror community. Movie reviews, Blu-ray releases, beer pairings, games, and more. Welcome to your new home for horror. This is Civil War. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our August Disc Bibberment. This is the Civil Gore Podcast. I'm your host, Tim. And this is Brian. And this is going, this this August Dismemberment, it's not a lot for August, really, uh, I would say. But it, it's some interesting titles, but I still think this might be a fun episode just because the titles are like all over the place. Yeah, it's a very weird month. I mean, the summer is usually like a lull in Blu ray releases. This was a five week month or five Tuesday month, I should say. And it was actually very short. I think we only had 16 releases this month. Yeah. Which is kind of unusual, even for a, kind of a summer dry spell. But yeah, it did, like Brian said, this thing is all over the place. Something for everybody or something for nobody, depending yeah. on your point of view. <laughs> yeah, depending on what, what your wallet says. But also, you know, I, I, you know, you're gearing up towards like, I think, a huge September and October. So it's like, so I think a lot of releases are coming out. Like, I'm sure like Black Phone will be out in September and uh, Nope. Some big horror releases that are right now are going to be out in September and October, I bet, on Blu-ray. Yeah. So yeah. you'll get, like, something like that. What was that other one that's, uh, oh, like, maybe Dash Cam will be out by then or something? You know, there's a lot of cool stuff that's right that's out right now that I think the way the accelerated release dates to home uh, screens, you know, I think will, will, will make a difference. So Yeah, I think so. Well, let's get right into it. These are our two Blu-ray releases for August 2nd, one of which is our pick of the week, so we'll save that one. <laughs> and the other the other release is from Scorpion releasing High Desert Kill from 1989. Like every year, Jim, Ray, Brad, and Paul leave town for a week to go hunting in the woods. But this year, everything is different. There's not a single animal to be found. The whole forest has fallen quiet. Two female campers they meet have mysteriously disappeared the next day, leaving all of their equipment behind. And then they start to behave weirdly themselves. An alien power is using them for cruel psychological experiments. Uh, this one looks really bad, but it has the great late Chuck Connors. So I am totally in just to watch him do anything. Yeah, and his signature grizzle is like, you know, in like full effect in this. You know, he's like, I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, where he's like, he does that grit and his mouth barely opens, you know, and it's like so. His his mouth only o- opens like those like robots almost you know like the robots where it's just like blink like C three PO like beep, beep, beep. but that's what kind of his mouth does he rarely like really gets his mouth open and he gets that grizzle out. I'd love to see a grizzle off between uh, Chuck Connors and Jack Palance. Oh my god, that would be great. That would be maybe that's a new segment on Civil War coming out with the grizzle <laughs> off. But uh, and you know what's funny too It's like of all the quotes for this movie they they take like review quotes from like the New York Post and New York Daily News like which is like. I don't know. I just don't see this as the market for this type of movie. <laughs> the no. city, city folk, you know, watching this movie. I feel like they were really struggling for quotes for this movie, but yeah. yeah. Well, the New York Post will quote anything for God's sake. I mean, yeah. If you ever, I, I know you're not familiar with them as I am, but you know, they're not. Uh, you know, and they were the ones I believe that the. I always get confused at this day, but I think pretty much they're the one that put the Regents' answers on the cover the morning of the Regents, forcing them to cancel the New York State Regents' exams. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they, they're and you know they, they're very like. Yeah, they're good for their sports, those two papers, but any other kind of legit news, you know, they're, they're, they're hit or miss. So movies, I, I don't think they, they've they ever agreed on any of, the, any of the New York papers, frankly, for movies. So um, um, Now, this one doesn't have any extras. It's just a new 2K restoration of the film and two presentations in 178 to 1 and 133 to 1 aspect ratios. But promise us all, though, if you do go to the store to purchase this, I know that's such a foreign thing these days, but if you go to the store and purchase this on the physical disc from the store, go up to them and, like, and like ask them how much in your most grizzled Chuck Connor voice and then record it and send it to us. I think that would be kind of entertaining. Yes, definitely. definitely. I don't like how much is this high <laughs> desert kill. <laughs> and then growl if it's too expensive, but uh, which it probably will be. But anyway, bonus point if you're wearing suspenders. Yes, yes, and uh, yeah, and, and also if you can come with a uh, a mannequin that talks on its own. <laughs> also. Uh, but, uh, get oh. me the Sarge. Sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> airplane two reference. Here. Okay. So uh, and I guess our next one we'll go right into. It's our pick of the week. Surprise, surprise. Um, this one is uh, from Arrow. Uh, so there's always a good disc, and it's Flatliners in 4K. So it's kind of a re-release because Flatliners has been out, but 4K 
uh, and an Arrow release always gets its own like thing. Uh, of course, it's from 1990, and it's an ambitious, charismatic medical student persuades his classmates to take part in a reckless experiment to see if there's life after death. They will kill themselves temporarily shut down flatline in quotes their heart and brain functions to briefly experience clinical death their horror begins when they realize although they've come back alive they haven't come back alone they yeah, come this back one. chuck connors <laughs> no okay <laughs> this one is a uh, i have the most bare bones version of this you can possibly get i think it might have a trailer it it may have like a basic commentary i don't remember but i am definitely in the market to upgrade this disc because because mine is like the like the dollar store version of the Flatliners Blu-ray. Like I definitely needed a solid copy. This is one of my favorites. I love this one. Yeah, I think I don't even have it on Blu-ray. I think I have it on DVD. So mine's like bare bones DVD. So that's even less. Like I need to like get it up to at least uh, the upgraded copy. So I'll probably p- pick this one up. Um, this one's and it's got some really good special features on here. It's got a new 4K restoration from the original negative, approved by director of photography Jean Debont. I love saying his name like <laughs> Jean Debont. I mean, it'd be funny if someone else said it and they'd spend it more like Jan de Bond. Uh, but no, but it's Jan de Bond. Jan de Bond. It's like so, if so fluid, so like perfectly said. Mm. Um, it's got brand new auto commentary by critics, which hopefully I will, because I, I already got things for these guys. So I hope they they eventually uh, elevate themselves to uh, film historians. But right now they're critics, so they don't get a story yet. Brian Reisman and Max Every. Uh, the Conquest of Our Generation, a brand new video interview with screenwriter Peter Falardi. That's like another like musical name. It's like Peter he's Filardi. a nice, he's a nice Irish lad, Peter Falardi. Yeah, Peter Falardi, Falardi, <laughs> Blarney Stone. Okay, <laughs> Visions of Light, a brand brand new video interview with director of photography Jean Debon <laughs> and chief lighting technician Edward Ayer. Jean Debon, would you like a croissant? I know. Oh, Jean Debon. Oh. Speaking of croissant, I'll have to mention that maybe in our in our little my Vegas recap about the amazing croissant I had. But uh, besides that, uh, hereafter, a brand new video interview with first assistant director John Kretschmer. Uh, he does not flu, flow. Uh, it's not his name is as fluent as Jean <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, his he's more like the the Karens would call him, like John Kretschmer. Yeah. You know? uh, restoration: a brand new video interview with production designer. Eugenio Zanetti and art director Larry Lundy. <laughs> Atonement, a brand new video interview with composer James Newton Howard and orchestrator Chris Boardman. Dressing for character, a brand new interview with a costume designer Susan Becker. Theatrical trailer image gallery, reversible sleeve, featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by Gary Pullen. And first pressing only, you get an illustrated collector's booklet featuring new writing on the film by Amanda Reyes, of course, one of our, our old time favorites. And my comment for her is over there. Okay. And, uh, and of course, by Peter Tunguet. And Amanda Ray, as you know, she's known for her amazing facts. We've discussed it before. But Peter Tunguet, we've never heard from him before, so I had to look him up. And apparently, before getting into film, he was, a, he was in a little-known singing group with his siblings called the Tunguets. So. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah, I like so. those uh, 60s girl groups. So maybe they're kind of in that Yeah, that I mean, he, yeah, I mean, I think it was I think there was a brother and a couple of sisters. So there was like a five of them, I believe. I don't know. I got to got to research. It's like the Partridge family, I guess. Yeah, yeah. that's what it's like. And they just went by the Tungettes. You know, it was so easy to add just an apostrophe <laughs> and an S to their name. And there they go. You know, back then it was like the, you know, the Ronettes, the Yeah. The yeah. Doobie, right? I love all those. people names. There weren't any creative names like there are these days, you know. Yeah. All right, well, let's recap the week of August 2nd. We had High Desert Kill featuring Chuck Connors from 1989. And our pick of the week, Arrow's release of Flatliners 4K, which is a nice excuse to upgrade your bare bones copy. So the next week up is August 9th. Uh, this was a pretty good release week. Uh, and a rare split on the this, on the uh, pick of the week. Right? Yeah, very rare split. And, and you know, it this month I thought would the total agreement between all our picks of the week. Cause I thought, uh, you know, every week had like a real standout, but I, I kind of have to go with Brian on this, this one. I think he's, he's made a, a interesting and solid choice. So we'll get right into it after we go through our regular releases. The first one up is one I've really, really wanted to see. It's from Lionsgate. I've heard a lot about this movie. Yeah. I pretty much know the whole movie cause I've pretty much been spoiled, uh, from various podcasts, but I'm still going to watch it. It's called men. It's from this year, 2022. Men, 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 men. That's all I can think of. <laughs> Manly men. Uh, in the aftermath of a personal tragedy, Harper retreats alone to the beautiful English countryside, hoping to have found a place to heal. But someone or something from the surrounding woods appears to be stalking her. What begins a simmering dread becomes a fully formed nightmare inhabited by her darkest memories and fears. This one looks 
super cool. Basically, all the men that she sees look are this played by the same actor, yeah. which is really really creepy. It, the trailer is just outstanding. Yeah, because they like modify him and like yeah. depending on the person. Yeah, it's super creepy. I think, and I also uh, the the A and A twenty four for this one stands for Apple. Is this an Apple theme going on through there? But I think that's a cold reference to the you know the forbidden fruit of garden yeah yeah eden and all that because they even mention a line in the trailer about oh it's the forbidden fruit yeah but this one looks awesome i heard yeah, it um, does look really cool i think rebecca mckendry covered it on uh colors of the dark podcast i think um i don't know i feel like oh didn't kim and Kat did kim and Kat do this one no 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 it was uh they did something uh, one like it like something similar yeah there was a uh, there was another podcast it was film threat Film Threat covered it. So, yeah, this one has been covered by a lot of different podcasts, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. No extras, but that's okay. It's a it's a Lionsgate disc. You don't really expect a ton of extras on those. Yeah, A24, you know, and they're, they're, they're definitely the arts, uh, artsy horror, you know. The, yeah. the, and, they, you know, so they don't always have uh, necessary special features. But, you know, they do a good job of just releasing things for for the, the viewer that might not get to see. You know, if you live in certain areas, you don't get to see these art films very often. That's right. Yeah, they you don't. Know, they're so. not. They don't make wide theatrical releases. All, right. All I mean, like I. Yes, I'm lucky that I live in New York, and I pretty much at some point can you know just go to the city. I take a train into the city, and I can see everything, pretty much. Yeah. But you know, not every area gets these these kind of movies. So I, you know, I really appreciate Lionsgate for taking on the A24 uh, films a lot of times and getting them out there for everybody. Um, the next one is, uh, this is, now this is going to sound like it's something else, but it's, it's, first of all, I think it's a new one. This Lightyear. I don't think we've had them as a, I don't uh, think so, a distribution no. come yeah. in, but yet, and it's, it's called Yellow Brick Road as one word, as I say that, because that's how it's written. Um, it's from 2010, so I don't even know how we haven't heard of this one, but, um, there are no munchkins in this though. No. But, uh, we'll warn you now for anyone expecting a Wizard of Oz spinoff. I haven't seen any munchkins in the trailer, but, uh. Anyway, in this indie horror offering from writers, directors, Jesse Holland and Annie Milton, a small team of uh, explorers head into the New Hampshire wilderness to investigate an unexplained disappearance that happened some 70 years earlier. No one knows why the residents of Friar made a collective decision to leave their homes without their money, their clothes, so what, they left naked? (laughs) Uh, Or a word about where they'd gone. But the truth could be stranger than fiction. So, yeah, yeah, this one looks cool. It's got some interesting... uh, Definitely, like Tim said, it looks a little low budget here, but, you know, it still looks decent, though. You know, it looks like something that, uh, like, I think if I had the opportunity to watch, I would get. I don't know if I'm going to go out and purchase this disc, but if it hits one of the streaming services, I'll definitely keep this in mind to watch. Um, It's got some features, uh, new behind-the-scenes featurettes, practical blood effects on an indie budget, uh, walking the yellow brick road. That sounds like a cool feature right there, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always fascinated by how indie films uh, sometimes achieve you know, some great sequences, you know, and so, you know, I mean, blood, yes, the fake blood is not hard to, to produce. I mean, it's caro syrups, a couple of things, and yeah, but but still, you know, you want to make sure, you know, you, sometimes, you know, it still could look bad if you don't do it right, so I always like to see those. Um, It's got a new cast and crew interviews, directors, writers, Andy Mitten and Jesse Holland, actors, ex- executive producers, Clark and Cassidy Freeman, producer Eric Hungerford. So that it really is a small group. I mean, you got like look, you got someone who's an actor and executive producer. You got a writer directors are the same guy. So it's a very small crew too. So this is true indie film here. Um and it's got the original director's commentary with Annie Mitten and Jesse Holland. Very nice. Uh the next one up is from SRS Cinema and it's I'm going to butcher these names. Oh uh, I'm going to say Rigo Rega Ooga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like one of those horns. Oga! Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. I don't know. It's OHGA. It's probably Oga or something like that. Uh, Giant Monsters Attack Triple Feature. So this is a set of kaiju films from Japan from 2005 to 2019. Uh, Raigo, King of the Sea Monsters. The battleship Yamato, the largest and strongest of its time, is on patrol when it comes upon the massive kaiju Raigo. The monster destroys the escort ships and damages the Yamato before returning to the ocean depths. Now the stage is set for a final battle. Who will prevail? And then in Rega, God of the Monsters, global warming leads to excessive melting of the southern polar ice cap, disrupting Earth's ecosystem. The receding ice brings a long dormant ancient kaiju named Rega that sets its sights on Japan. Can Rega be stopped or will all of Japan be destroyed by his fury? Uh, and he looks like a total Godzilla ripoff, but that's yeah, okay. yeah. That's why he went to Japan. I mean, for that one. <laughs> yeah. He had to. <laughs> uh, God Rega versus King Oga. Raiga returns, rising in Atami Harbor and attacking the city. A second kaiju, Oga, 
soon joins the chaos and the two monsters clash. As the beasts work their way to Tokyo, will Japan's armed forces be enough to stop the monsters from laying waste to the city? I don't know. This one, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's like some kind of cheesy effects and stuff, but if you like these kind of movies, they look like they'd be pretty entertaining. Yeah, I mean, these are always fun. I mean, this is the first kai- set of kaiju movies based on Lady Gaga lyrics, though, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, it's, 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 you know, it's like, that's all I can think of when I see this, the way you wrote that. I don't know. It's like, But yeah, either way, yeah, it looks like fun. I mean, it, it you know, those are always fun. You can't go into those expecting, like, some kind of serious, like... You know, like yeah. drama. You know, it's it's silly. It's it is. Funny. It is what it is. Yeah. Oh, great! And now the next one I get. This is fun for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, this one did have some original trailers, but no other extras. Um, yeah. But you do get three movies, so true. So I got a new one. I think it's a new, another new one. Visual Visual Vengeance. I don't think we have that one. Oh my that's God. a perfect distribution for this. God, I'm glad you this. have to cover this one. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's my nightmare, as I'll tell you. So this is L. A. AIDS Jabber. <laughs> Uh, from 1994. Well, we got, I mean, this last year, well, we got the COVID killer. So I guess back in, but this is, this should have been out in late eighties, I guess. This is 1994. Uh, it says a guy who has been diagnosed with AIDS decides to get his revenge on the world by attacking people with hypodermic needles filled with his blood. So, okay. So this used to be literally my nightmare. Like, you know, I, I mean, Tim knows, I'll tell you, I'm like phobic about it. I, I'm a bit of a hypochondriac, very phobic. So you can imagine how well I've done the last couple of years. Uh, but, uh, you know, and of course now New York is getting a monkey pox, uh, thing going on, but, uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean that, that's a little bit obviously harder to get. I mean, there's, there's a lot more like close contact and extended contact involved with monkey pox. So not, not that one's not driving me as crazy as, as, you know, as COVID did or, but this, when this was that, you know, I mean like, and because I think what really set me off with the, the thing, like every time and still to this day, actually, anytime I get cut with something, like I get you know hit in a finger i'm always worried oh my god because there was a story once that was going around um i think it happened in florida and this was about it was definitely in the 2000 um now it might have been late 90s actually when i first heard the story where people were actually taking like um like I, there was a, a story going on i remember someone told me at work that like i guess someone who had uh, aids was going around stabbing themselves and then putting they're putting the needle afterwards like on and, and I don't think even with this way you'd get it because I think it would die by the time someone would do this but they would put it on the inside of a uh, uh, a gas pump so when someone would reach in there they'd get stabbed so that's all I need to know and literally to this day I look on the inside of a gas <laughs> pump handle to make sure there's nothing in there not not even for that reason just for some put something someone could put anything in there you know so, but yeah, this is like my literal nightmare. I don't even want to, I wouldn't even watch this thing if they like, you know, they paid me to watch this because I, I don't need this kind of like thing going on in my head, you know, if this, it but, looks uh, really it looks bad. horrible. Yeah. The guy, I mean, there's one scene where the guy's like, what's wrong with you? You're like, I have AIDS and he screams it and it's just, it's ridiculous. It looks silly. It's stupid. It's just a dumb idea, a dumb plot for a movie. It's, it's not even really that, that like, I mean, it's so like, it's such a, I don't know. It's just everything about this is just stupid. Um, and like Tim wrote, because this looks like the epitome of poor taste to go along with poor production value. And he is right. Um, yeah, and I, this is just, this is just, I, I mean, I, if there's a not pick of the week we'd have, I think this would, this might be not pick of the ever. I would never watch this piece of crap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, let's, crazy. let's move on to one that uh, we go from, I would never watch this to, I would also never watch this, but for completely different reasons. This is yeah, because we don't even know what this is. Uh, this was this was from Media Blasters, and it's called Pinocchio Nine Six Four. It's from nineteen ninety one, and uh, man, if you can tell what's going on in this trailer, more power to you. Pinocchio Nine Six Four, lobotomized cyborg sex slave, is thrown out onto the street by his owners because of his inability to maintain an erection. He is befriended by. Maybe a... he has to keep lying, and then it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I actually, I don't even think Pinocchio has anything to do with the, the real Pinocchio, of course. <laughs> he has be- just put an image in my head I will never get out. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I didn't, uh... Uh, he is befriended by a criminally insane, memory-wiped homeless girl. Meanwhile, the corporate entity who manufactured and sold him plots to kill him because of his malfunction. I, I have no words for this. Go, you have to yeah, go watch I, the trailer. I have no idea what this movie yeah, is. Yeah, watch this trailer. And anyone else, can, anyone even has remotely 
got any of that description from the trailer, first of all. I'd love to know. There's just a lot of, like, weird... It almost looks like if you took every piece of gore out of a trauma film and just spliced it together without any explanation, that's kind of what this trailer's like. And the guy, the main, like, cyborg in it looks like uh, some guy that was trying to dress up as Pennywise for Halloween and just quit halfway through. Yeah, it's very... This, this whole thing is so bizarre. Like, I don't even understand. I mean... Yes, I mean, we, we mock trailers that give away too much. Um, sometimes we'll complain about trailers that, uh, that like, you know, that that show, like, way too little. This one, though, just showed, like, somehow it managed to do both. It showed way too much, but yet not enough to tell you what the hell's going on. So this is just a like, trailer failed, like, spectacularly <laughs> to, to, to get me to watch this thing. I have no clue. It wasn't even a redeeming scene that said, ooh, I might watch it for that scene. No. It's just a whole bunch of craziness going on to the point of where... Like I, I I can't even remember any of it. It was so gone. It's so much going on. But uh. all right, Brian, I'll let you take your pick of the week, and I'll take mine. Okay. All right. So mine is is one I've seen years ago, and uh, I remember re- like enjoying this back in the uh, back in the nineties. So I, I definitely want to watch this again. Uh, it's, this is a trauma release. It's Death by Temptation from nineteen ninety. Um, it was when Joel's best buddy Kay invites him to New York City to stay. The country oh it rhymed. Look at that. Uh-huh. Uh, stay to stay. The country boy can't wait to hit the streets to see a little action. That's when all hell breaks loose. In an uptown bar, Joel is smitten by a temptress, a demonic succubus in human form from the dark side, who leaves her lover's dream dead. One by one, Joel's friends fall victim to her charm, leaving Joel to face the evil temptress and his destiny alone. And there's a lot of people you'll recognize in this movie, Tim. Did you when you watch the trailer? Did you catch them all? Uh, I caught definitely caught Samuel L. Jackson. Yes, is in yes, it. but but also uh, Kadeem Hardison. Yep, yep, is in there, and he's uh, and there's also um, wait, who is else did I see in there? Um, there was another person I saw in there that I was like, oh my god, that's so and so, and I can't, now I can't remember it. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, this is a good. It's funny, it's, it's directed by James Bond the <laughs> third. So uh, yeah, I don't know if he was a if he was a spy also before he became director, but no, we kidding. Uh, but yeah, no, this one was a fun one. I saw this years ago. It definitely needs a rewatch. Tim, you said you haven't seen it, so you're looking forward to checking it out. I have not seen this. Uh, yeah, and this actually has some uh, some good features. It says uh, it's got a brand new 2K restoration sourced from the 35 millimeter original camera negative, brand new career spanning audio interview with writer, producer, director, actor James Bond the third. Uh, Ernest and Lloyd, a candid conversation between cinematographer Ernest Dickerson and Lloyd Kaufman. And you know that's great because if you've ever seen any kind of conversation with Lloyd Kaufman. Yes, you know it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't. He could pretty much talk with anybody, um, and it's great. He's got a film historian and critic, Michael Gingold, on Death by Temptation. Of course, remember our old friend Michael Gingold. He used to t- he used to uh, do the old film series called Gingold and Oldies, <laughs> and of course, he likes to pronounce his name with a British accent when he goes, "Hi, I'm Michael Gingold." You know. <laughs> So, and actually, he's do like he's got like his own show. Like, does he have a real show like The Gingold Files or something? It's close. <laughs> how close we were. I'm into it. I don't know funny. that he's British though. Yeah, he's probably not British at all. <laughs> but um, that that part we kind of. But the fact that he actually does have a show about things, it's kind of funny. Uh, it come, also comes with an original trailer, an archived article gallery, and reversible cover artwork. So that was my pick of the week. I just felt because I I like when movies like that that are um you know the or like the these kind of like. You know, forgotten. Sometimes people forget these like fun movies back from like the eighties and nineties. So I love when uh, a release comes out that's that's got some cool like uh, retrospective features on it. And I just felt that you know this would, this could, this should win over. And the only reason, Tim, that like I yours could have been, I think, was a great pick for pick of the week. It's just since it's a kind of like a re, uh, it's kind of like a re-release a little bit possibly. That's the only reason why the other I, – I, that's why I gave the edge to the other one. And also, it's, it's nice for us to have two picks of the week for people yeah. sometimes. So. Well, if I had seen that one, I, I might have very well picked it. But I didn't know yeah. anything about that movie. So, But it looked cool. I, I love the trailer. I thought it looked amazing. Oh, yeah, so, so. And that's another thing. That, now, that's how you do a trailer. Yeah, that's <laughs> a great trailer. <laughs> like if you trailer. want to get someone to watch it. Like here you have Tim never saw it, and now he's dying to see it. So. Yeah. Uh, my pick of the week uh, is was kind of an easy one for me because I love this movie. It was one of the first uh, – it really is one of the first movies I can remember watching on DVD uh, because this came out in 97 and DVD really started, I really became a, you know, attention grabbing to me around 98, 99. And uh, so I was, you know, I was buying DVDs right and left. I had my own little home theater thing set up. And yeah. Same with me. Yeah. yeah exactly so this right. was uh so this one was definitely one of the first like new DVD releases I watched. 
Coming from Paramount, this is Event Horizon 4K 25th Anniversary Edition Steelbook. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm not a big fan of steelbooks. I don't collect steelbooks. I, I don't. They're kind of annoying a little bit. They're annoying to me because they don't fit with all your other releases on the shelf, you know, because they're in a different kind of case. I mean, there's some people that that's all they collect is steelbooks, and that's fine. I think that'd be cool to have all steelbook collection, but I, I just don't. For me, it, it like juts out of my collection. I don't like them. Now, this one, though, I could not find this in a non-Steelbook version. So I think this is like an actual, um, yeah, this is like what it's being released as. Uh, 1997 was the year, and I'll give you a description for those who haven't seen it. When a rescue crew investigates a spaceship that disappeared into a black hole and has now returned, things start to take an increasingly horrific turn. If you haven't seen this one, this is one of the great space horror movies of all time. I haven't seen it in a while. It probably, it's probably definitely due for a rewatch. Uh, special features, not a huge amount of special features, and I'm I don't see new branded on here, so these could are probably already released. Um, disc one is just the 4K Blu-ray, and disc two, the regular Blu-ray, but it has some extras. Audio commentary by director Paul W. S. Anderson and producer Jeremy Bolt. The making of Event Horizon five featurettes. The point of no return. The filming of Event Horizon with director commentary. Secrets with optional director commentary. The unseen Event Horizon. The unfilmed rescue scene plus conceptual art. And the original trailer. So that was our week for August 9th. We had Men from 2022, Yellow Brick Road from 2010, Rigo Raga. You have to say it that you way. You have to say Yellow Brick Road. Uh, Rigo Raga Oga, Giant Monsters Attack Triple Feature, and LAH Jabber from 1994. Don't buy that, guys. That's just Please it's don't. so yeah. exploitive. Uh, Pinocchio yeah. 964 from 1991. And then our pick of the week, Brian chose. A great one that I'm dying to see, Death by Temptation from 1990. And mine was the Event Horizon 4K 25th Anniversary Edition Steelbook. All right. August 16th. Next week. This is a weird this week. This is a weird week. Say. So I had to double, I double and triple check this because I was like, this can't be the only three horror releases out this week. And yes, I, I mean, I guess we could just kind of talk about these in a group, Ryan, because I, yeah, I mean, our pick of the week is is very obvious that it's it's, but it's basically it's three movies in a series that came out, and I'm not sure why it's only the first three. Yeah. Um. When there's what is there seven? I think or six, especially and there's a great set. Yeah. Uh, just to say, okay, it's basically the Child's Play one, two, and three. Yeah. Coming out, they're all coming out on 4K from Shout Factory. It's just kind of like they're all kind of re-releases in a way. But, um, but they have a lot of new stuff. They're doing the same thing. New stuff. Yeah, yeah. they're Shout the Factory. It's a little annoying. I'm going to be honest because Shout Factory put out the great Halloween box set, and then they're coming out with this new 4K versions with new stuff on them that you're going to want to upgrade to. Now they're doing the same thing with Child's Play. You know, Brian and I bought that great Chucky box set, and now they're coming out with these in 4K versions. And I'm guessing down the road they'll probably release these in another box set. But um. Yeah, Child's Play 1, Child's Play 2, Child's Play 3, all in 4K. Uh, I don't know if I'm even going to read the synopsis for these. You guys have seen Child's Play series. Yeah. Um, but I will go through. I'm going to kind of go sideways through these, Brian. Um, they all have a new 4K restoration. Child's Play 1 has a uh, audio commentary with director Tom Holland, audio commentary with Alex Vincent, Catherine Hicks, and Chucky designer Kevin Yeager, audio commentary with producer David Kirshner and screenwriter Don Mancini, and select scene commentary by Chucky. I believe those are all. It's kind of funny. Yeah, it just sounds funny. Those are all on the. Um, those are all on the actual uh, box set that Brian and I have. Those are not new extras. However, for the uh, regular Blu-ray, they added some new extras. Uh, a new, uh, obviously, the new 4K restoration. New interview with Don Mancini, Birth of the Good Guy. New interview with actor Alex Vincent, Friends till the End. New interview with actor Chris Sarandon, Believe Me Now. New Chucky the Great and Terrible interview with producer David Kirshner and new Windy City Chills an interview with production manager Robert Latham Brown. Then uh, same audio commentaries on that one. And then this three, we have behind the scenes special effects footage. Howard Berger, your special effects friend till the end an interview with a special makeup effects artist. Life behind the mask being Chucky an interview with actor Ed Gale. Evil comes in small packages, archival featurette. Chucky building a nightmare, archival featurette. A monster convention, archival piece from the 2007 Monster Mania panel. Introducing Chucky, the making of Child's Play, archival featurette, vintage featurette, theatrical trailer, TV spot, and still galleries, behind-the-scenes posters, and lobby cards. So really, other than the 4K upgrade, you're just getting a bunch of new interviews. So right. whether that's worth the upgrade to you or not, um, as kind of your mileage may vary. Now, 
that was our pick of the week just because it's the original. But I'll let yeah. Brian run through the features on the Child's Play 2 disc. Yeah, so the second one, uh, it's, so this one, uh, it's like Tim said, they all have that 4K restoration. But uh, this one's got the audio commentary with the, the director for this one, John LaFia. Um, then this two, here's all its new ones. It's got a new, actually, a different f- new 4K restoration, I guess. Uh, it's a new Puppet Master, an interview with writer Don Mancini. New, The Family Expands, an interview with producer David Kirshner. New, Under Pressure, an interview with actor Alex Vincent. New, In Kyle We Trust, an interview with actress Christine Elise. Uh, new, School's Out, an interview with actress Beth Grant. Beth, Beth Grant, sorry. Actress Beth Grant. There we go. <laughs> Tongue twister there. Uh, new, The Second Dance, an interview with executive producer Robert Latham Brown. Audio commentary with director John LaFia. And theatrical trailer TV spot and additional scenes from the broadcast version. But again, those are mostly all on art. So anything nice and new in front of is obviously new, but the other stuff has been uh, is already on that great set that Tim and I have. Yep. And then part three, of course, another 4K restoration. This one does have a new audio commentary, which is interesting, by director oh, Jack yeah, Bender. Oh, new one by Jack Bender. So that's yeah, pretty okay. good. And he's got the original one on there, too. Oh, no, it's still the same. They're both new ones. Never mind. Yeah. The, um, no, the, uh, the other – yeah, there's – it's some of these extras repeat between discs. That's why it's kind of a little confusing. Um, they have the original commentary producer, Robert Latham Brown. Then on the Blu-ray disc, they have, uh, again, the commentary with director Jack Bender. New Ride the Frightening, an interview with writer Don Mancini. I like that. New War Games, an interview with actress Perry Reeves. New Chucky Goes East, an interview with executive producer David Kirshner. New Carnivals and Campouts, an interview with producer Robert Latham Brown. New Midway Centurions, an interview with actor Michael Chiaffo. New Sheer Terror, an interview with makeup artist Craig Reardon, and New Unholy Mountain, an interview with production designer Richard Sawyer. I'd, li- I'd really like to hear that one because of that great uh, theme park ending to Child's Play 3. Yeah. I'd love to hear how that was all came about. Uh, it's got that original audio commentary by producer Robert Latham Brown, theatrical trailer, TV spot, additional scenes from the broadcast version. So that one, that one seems a little more uh, appealing to me because of that new audio commentary, other than just new interviews, but... Again, it would be nice to have all these in 4K at some point, but uh, not not right away from me. I'm not going to double dip on those. So that was our complete week for August 16th. Child's Play 1, 2, and 3 in 4K. All right, that brings us to August 23rd, another really, really short week. Only two releases, and the first one up, which you would think I would love this because it's a Sasquatch movie. Uh, Suburban Sasquatch from 2004, when a giant bloodthirsty anthropoid goes on a killing... In a sprawling suburban park area, it's up to a couple of rangers, a reporter, and a mystical Native American warrior to try and stop it. This one, oh man, this one looks really bad. It's not even a Sasquatch. It's a. It's literally a guy in a gorilla suit. It's a gorilla. Like it. It. It's. It literally looks like the gorilla suit I saw at Target this past Halloween. (laughs) Not, and it's not even that. Like I think it's not even that good. Like (laughs) you're probably right. Yeah, it looks worse. It's bad. Guys, it's really yeah. bad. I, I swear, I, I it literally could have been Amityville Sasquatch, and like that's the kind that's what you're getting there. So that that should visualize to you the kind of caliber of movie you're getting there. Yeah, with that, it looks just so horrendous. Like it's like, how do you even like? How do you take it seriously? I, I don't understand. It's from 2004. You you telling me they couldn't have got like up the budget just like just add a hundred dollars to the budget, you probably got a better costume. Well, here's yeah. the thing, this. If you're going to make a movie like this, you almost have to make it like a comedy, tongue in cheek type thing, because otherwise it's just. It, it looks, I don't think they're. I don't know. I think they're playing this one straight. So, and I will tell you, there's an extra on here that will explain everything. It's got a new transfer taken from master standard definition videotape and remastered and upgraded in high def for this release. New feature length commentary from director David Waskavage. New commentary from Sam Panico of BNS about movies and Bill Van Rain of Drive in Asylum. And here's the extra that should clue you in. A full riff tracks version of Suburban Sasquatch. So it's got to be bad. Go. Uh, d- That's what probably put it on the map to begin with. Designing the Bigfoot costume, which I'm, I can't believe they didn't buy this off the shelf somewhere. Designing it? What? Well, yeah, it's designing it to new words for I walked into the whatever the cheapest costume <laughs> I could find is. Uh, and purchase it. Making the CGI for Suburban Sasquatch. Again. CGI? What CGI? <laughs> I don't- Outtakes. There was no CGI in this this film. Uh, at least not shown in the trailer. You ooh. figure they would have at least spent, if they spent money on CGI for this thing, which there's no way <laughs> they did. That's, I mean, uh, maybe, maybe it was uh, like CGI stands for costume garbage initiative. <laughs> yes, I don't know. You know, it's like it's got to be something else. It cannot mean it cannot be what CGI normally means because 
I'm telling you, this doesn't look like this barely. This probably couldn't even. It probably had like paper credits. Like they probably held up signs. <laughs> like this, the, the quality of this thing. Uh, archival behind the scenes featurette from the director's POV, archival interviews, behind the scenes photo gallery, original suburban Sasquatch teaser trailer and feature trailer, collectible mini poster, trailers for other great visual vengeance releases, stick your own VHS stickers, which that's kind of cool. And rever- what, is that? what is that though? Stick your own VHS. I don't know, but. It's stickers, so that's cool. I don't know. Yeah, stickers are fun. Uh, reversible art would be the best thing about this. Disc. <laughs> reversible artwork featuring original release art. So uh, why is there so many features for this movie? Do we do we miss something? Like, is it so campy that it's like so bad? It's good I don't. Know, it could be. I mean, I'm sure it's on Tubi somewhere. So we'll have to go check it out. I know. Wait, wait. I'm going to check right this moment. I'm going to see what it's on. You're right, and I would not be surprised. I think Tim deserves a prize. Everybody should send him something if this ends up being on uh, on uh, on Tubi. Uh, suburban. If it's... See, I'm writing Suburban. Suburban. Yep. It not. Oh, Tim nailed it. Not only is it on sub- on Tubi, it's on Vudu and Plex. There you go. Plex. Have you ever seen Plex? Plex is pretty good, actually. They kind of like, it's almost like it takes all the, the uh, you, can, you can put your own things in there, I think, too. But it also, it kind of like, it's almost like a just watch where you can search it and it finds whatever service and kind of pulls it into Plex for you. Oh. So it basically like all kind of, to be, and it's free. Hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, this is hilarious. So it's totally, uh, fr- it's for free on Vudu with ads, free on Tubi, and free on Plex. There you go. So now I know what I'm probably going to check out tonight. And the funny thing, if you look at Just Watch, they show a close-up of the, the camera, uh, of the Sasquatch thing. And not only is it as bad as it looked before, but it's purple. <laughs> it's actually worse than the trailer. Somehow it might be worse, Tim. I'm going to actually send you this picture. So no, I, I looked it up. I just, I just looked it up. I just looked it up. Oh, I literally just yeah, saw see? it. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. But you know what? Anything, almost anything besides L.A. AIDS Jabber, could have been up against this one for pick of the week and probably would have won. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing though. So this would have probably totally been like a, a, a Tim Tubi trap or something, or one of our Tubi traps. If uh, we didn't now it can't be because we both like discovered it on here, yeah. but um, I bet you it totally could have easily been picked if we were uh, careless. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks bad. So. All right, Brian, what's our pick of the week? This one's actually a good movie though. Yeah, this one, look, I've never seen this, so this is kind of like, uh, but it looks really fun, and I want to kind of see it. Yeah. Okay, real quick, though, before I get into that, I just looked, I was, I went down the Suburban Sasquatch uh, uh, rabbit hole here, and it says, the trivia, it says, this movie was filmed at a high school, as shown by football practice, happening outside the main character's office. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, <laughs> moving on from that. Well, let's go to something really good. Uh, this is a Shout Factory release. It's Dog Soldiers 4K from 2002. So during a routine training mission in the Scottish Highlands, a small squad of British soldiers uh, find a wound- wounded Special Forces captain and the bloody remains of his team. When the savage attackers return, the men are rescued by a zoologist who identifies what hunts them as werewolves. Without transport or communications, the group is forced to retreat to a farmhouse to wait for the full moon to disappear at dawn. So, yeah, crazy Scottish werewolf flick. I am totally in on that. Uh, this one looks really fun. Timmy, I guess you've seen this one? Yeah, I saw this one. Again, this is another one I remember from my early DVD days because this is back in, from 2002. So I probably watched this in like 2003 or 2004, and I, I thought it was really, really good. It was one of those that I kind of took a chance on. And any anytime I come across a good werewolf movie, it kind of sticks in my mind because there's a lot of bad werewolf movies, but the good ones are, are usually really good. And so yeah. um, this one always stuck out to me as one of the ones that I always thought of when I'm, when I'm putting together like my mind list of like top 10 werewolf movies or whatever. This one kind of, I don't know if it makes like the top 10. It probably does. I mean, there's not that many werewolf movies that are worthy of that, but uh, it, it always kind of like bubbles up to the surface as one of those. I always think about when I think of like really good werewolf movies. So, yeah, and, and, you know, and, like, this one not only looks cool, but, and you know, and like, Shout Factory, uh, like, typical Shout Factory, they gave, like, a good, good disc here. So, for fans of this movie, you, you'd probably, like, this is almost, like, probably, like, a must-buy for Tim. Um, it's got a two, uh, new 4K restoration for the original camera negative, and this is approved by director Neil Marshall and director of photography Sam McCurdy. So, that's good. You got the, the uh, they got the two people most important uh, yeah. in deciding the visuals of a film, approving this, which is not always the case. Yeah. This is good that they're approving it to make sure it's okay. Uh, you know, because sometimes they uh, they like see, you know, you think about it. Some of the cinematography, they, they do certain things, and when you enhance it, it kind of ruins the look. So the fact that they approve this, you know you're still getting a, a, the, the 
version you're supposed to see. Uh, new werewolves, crawlers, and cannibals, and more. A new 40-minute interview with Neil Marshall. New audio commentary by writer and associate professor of film, Allison Pierce. <laughs> um, I don't know why I said it that way. Just her name. She is almost really she almost made my list of film historians because she's an associate professor of film, which yeah, is real close. But I was like, eh, yeah. I can't quite do it yet. Yeah. She's almost like lifeguard in training, yeah, like that. Yeah. Like right she's there, getting there. She'll she'll yet. be there before she'll you. She'll be know there it. soon enough, and then we'll get to say her name again. Uh, audio uh, archive audio commentary by director Neil Marshall. Archive audio commentary by Neil Marshall, Sam McCurdy, producer Keith Bell, and actors uh, Sean Pertwee, uh, Kevin McKidd, and Liam Cunningham. A history of lycanthropy. Uh, author Gavin Baddeley on werewolf cinema. Oh, that's a you thing right there, mm-hmm. Tim. Uh, werewolves folklore and cinema. Video essay by author Mikkel J. Coven. Was it? Wait a minute. Was Michael J. Cove, wasn't he a? Uh, at one point, he was a film. Yeah, star, he was. Like, yeah, but here he's just he's an just author an author now. Back then, so we, we won't mention much more <laughs> about him at that point. Uh, Werewolves vs. Soldiers: The Making of Dog Soldiers with Neil Marshall, producers Christopher Fig and Keith Bell, actors Sean Pertwee. <laughs> Kevin McCrid, <laughs> Darren Morfitt, Leslie Simpson, Emma Cleesby, special effects artist Bob Keen, and more. A Cottage in the Woods, an interview with production designer Simon Bowles. Uh, Combat, a short film by Neil Marshall, so you get one of his uh, earlier things. Uh, deleted scenes and gag reel with optional commentary by Neil Marshall. Trailers and photo gallery. A 108-page book with new essays by Craig Ian Mann, Alison Pierce, <laughs> Zoe Rose Smith, Anya Stanley. Exclusive interview with Neil Marshall by Matthew Thrift plus behind-the-scenes photos, six collector art cards, and a rigid slipcase <laughs> with new artwork by Chris Malbo. I don't know what a rigid slipcase is. Like a, like a, like a like rib, ribbed, it's like a, uh, ribbed for your, your viewing pleasure? I don't know what it's like. The rigid <laughs> What is a rigid <laughs> slipcase? I'm not sure. Oh, that's a that's a really good... Do you want to know? I don't, I don't know. think we want to know. Uh, that, that's a really good okay. disc though for that movie. I mean, that's... yeah, I know. I may have to. I may have to be one of those sight unseen purchases just because. I think you'll. I think you'll like it. I really. I, re- I remember having fond memories of it. Um, so yeah, that was that for August twenty third. We had Suburban Sasquatch from two thousand four, and our pick of the week: Dog Soldiers four K Collector's Edition two thousand two Shop Factory Pack Disc. Tons of audio commentaries. Probably well worth the money for that one. Yeah. All right, August 30th, again, we're rounding out the month with just two releases here. And uh, the first one up is from Severn Films. This one's called Faceless from 1987. And uh, <laughs> I'm just laughing because I'm just picturing Telly Savalas <laughs> with a yeah. little dumb, dumb lollipop in his mouth. Uh, oh, because of my comment? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, when model Barbara Hallen disappears in France, her father's private detective traces her steps to a private plastic surgery clinic run by Dr. Flamand. Come for the Telly Savalas, stay for the bodybuilding dude getting kicked in the nuts, is what I had to say <laughs> about this trailer. Uh, this one is based off a movie called what called uh, Eyes Without a Face, which is a classic. If you haven't seen Eyes Without yeah. a Face, go see it. It is incredible. It's a black and white movie. It has one of the most horrific plastic surgery scenes I've ever seen. And this is like a movie from way back. So for it to be still that shocking these days is really insane. It's a great, great movie, but probably better than this one. Um, but yeah, so Brian... Is Billy Idol's song in it, though? Eyes without a face. Eyes without a face. Yeah, the production, like Brian said, the production logo is the longest part of this trailer. It looks like a weird Sweeps Week episode of Kojak. <laughs> Because <laughs> you know, like when they go, like you know, Saved by the Bell goes to Hawaii. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's like Telly Zavala's goes to Par- Kojak goes to Paris. You know. <laughs> yeah, it, it, is, it is so weird. Like they kept showing the Eiffel Tower production logo like multiple times. I'm like, what yeah. is this? And it started like for the first 15 seconds of his trailer is that like guy's name, and it's like in the music trying to go to his. It's so weird. So yeah. weird. But uh, but do you think Telly Zavala's used his players card international to to finance this movie? Because uh, it seems like he deserve better i don't know, I don't know. <laughs> uh this one does have a lot of extras though it has a, a brand new 4k restoration it has new the female predator interview with actress brigitte lahai new face <laughs> i don't know how to spread it. doesn't she have like an her own disc coming out i thought i saw i don't know like i thought i saw on instagram like a uh like a like something like her a uh, set like a set of just her movies or something i don't know i don't know how to even pronounce her name for i'm just terrible at these uh, new facial recognition interview with Kim Newman. Oh, there's Kim Newman, author of Nightmare oh, yeah, Movies, a uh, critical guide to horror. Oh, he's stuck, he in, stuck in there. Yeah, 
A critical guide to horror films. He's he's a good commentator. I like him. I like his commentaries. Uh, new Parisian Encounters, face to face with actress Carolyn Monroe. New Predators of the Night, interview with Stephen Thrower. There's another one. Uh, author of. Oh my God, we're just missing uh, all these. Movies. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> they're not in their film story roles. They're kind of going in cogito for this movie. Yeah, and by the way, I was right. It's it's, it's coming out on August first. It's Bridget Lahey, Les Films de Culte Blu-ray. Oh. It's called. It's a five disc set of her, and she's on the cover naked with a big thing that's censored right over her her beauty. Interesting. So. Yeah, so apparently she did a lot of uh, stuff by Jess Franco and those kind of people, you know, those kind of directors that exploited her, yeah. her body. So, yeah, I know. And the only reason I said, I think it was Dawn of the Discs, you know, that, that site we follow on Instagram yeah, yeah. that always shows all the. I think they had like featured it. And I'm like, I'm like, Bridget LaHaye, that sounds so familiar that name. And that's why. Huh. So. Uh, this has an archive, archival audio commentary with director Jess Franco and actress Lena Romay. EPK interviews with actors Helmut Berger, Chris Mitchum, and Telly Zavallis. Archival interview with director Jess Franco. Archival interview with actor Chris Mitchum. Selected scene commentary with Chris Mitchum. Therese 2, The Mission, 1987 parody short starring Bridget Leigh. French trailer and English trailer. So I don't know about this movie. I'm, no, there's not much about it other than Telly Savalas that really drew me to it. But, uh, you know, I, I do recommend Eyes Without a Face if you haven't seen it. I mean, it is Severn film, so, I mean, there must be something to this yeah. movie. Severin doesn't just release like garbage, yeah. so they, they usually release some good stuff. It's, so there must be something. It's got a runtime of 120 minutes or uh, 90 minutes if you subtract the production logo. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that, and uh, the, the the long gratuitous uh, Telly Savalas lollipop. <laughs> no, which we're no, we cannot guarantee no, no, uh, we cannot. is in there. But uh, okay, so the pick of the week. Uh, this is a good one. It's kind of a. I mean, this has been out a couple times, I think, in different forums, but this is a new uh, Shao Factory 4K release, so this is always a, a, a you know, it's going to be good. It's uh, Cat People uh, from 4K, and this is the uh, 82, the Nastasia Kinski version, where it used to give me nightmares because of the part where the, the panther, like, pulls the guy's arm off. Yeah. There. Into a, which always freaked me out, because that was, like, the first scene I ever saw in the movie. It just happened to turn on cable right at that point one time. Uh, I had watched it, obviously, in its entirety since, but it used to freak me out. Um but yeah, it's it's a cool one. So uh, this one, uh, disc one, is a uh, 4K Blu-ray, uh, f- and it's got a f- new 4K restoration of the film from the original camera negative. Uh, it's got audio commentary with director Paul Schrader. The disc two has got um, another oh same uh, 4K restoration, uh, and then it's got an audio, uh, same audio commentary. Now here here's the other special features, which none of these are new from the other previous releases. So, but still some good ones here. Uh, more than a remake, an interview with director Paul Schrader. Unleashing the Animal Within, an interview with actress Nastasia Kinski. Making is she related to Klaus Kinski? Do, do we ever know? I don't know. I'll look it up while you continue the extras. Because I just like Kinski. Yeah. That name. Uh, Making Memories, an interview with actress Annette O'Toole. Oh, one of my favorite members. She was Lana Lang in Superman 3. Uh, Caging the Animal, an interview with actor John Hurd. Oh, another uh, good uh, good actor. Of course, the late John Hurd, who's uh, known for Tim's favorite, Home Alone. Oh, <laughs> yeah. She's Klaus Kinski's uh, daughter. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. I'm glad there's a good Kinski yeah, relationship, yeah. you know. Uh, recon- rec- <laughs> yeah. uh, reconnecting with cat people, an interview with actor Malcolm McDowell. I mean, this had a good yeah, cast. Yeah, really good. If you yeah. think about it. Yeah. Cat fight, an interview with actress Lynn, La- Lynn Lowry. There you too. go. There you, go. Yeah. you got a lot of people in this here. Uh, composing a cult classic, an interview with composer G- Giorgio Moroder, or Moroder, I guess. Uh, cat people, an intimate portrait. On the set with Paul Schrader, filmmaker Robert Wise, and the production of the uh, producer of the original Cat People with Val. Oh, and Val Luton. I see. Uh, uh, special makeup effects by Tom Berman. I'll look at the film's matte paintings, original theatrical trailer and TV spot, photo galleries, photos from the film, production art, and posters. Yeah, I, I probably will get, you know, because I don't have, I thought I had a version of it, but I guess I don't have um, this at all. So I, I may need to pick this one up. Yeah, I, I haven't, kinda like this movie. I, don't, I have not seen this one forever. I'm a big fan of the original Cat People, like the 1940s version. And I've watched that one multiple times, but I don't think I've seen this one, but maybe once when I was younger. So I need to definitely need to do a rewatch on this one. I remember it being a lot more uh, heavy handed on the like supernatural, like the 40s, what was it 1947, I think is the, uh, the original. That one is very, uh, very impl- implies all the supernatural, 1942. It kind of implies the supernatural elements a lot, but I think this one was a little more yeah. you know, overt in in uh the supernatural stuff and the obviously the violence because of the leopard ripping the arm off thing but 
Yeah, and I think that, and of course, this one had a lot more uh, nudity. Yeah, than, it's definitely, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Update film with Nastasia <laughs> yeah. Kinski in it. That was like their signature. Uh, but uh, yeah, so, you know, the original definitely was a little more, I guess, family friendly. You could say, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was the uh, only two releases for August 30th. We had Faceless from 1987 with Telly Savalas, Who Loves You, Baby? And uh, Cat People 4K. Players Club. <laughs> <laughs> Cat People 4K, our pick of the week, 1982. Go check that one out. So yeah, a short month, but uh, we'll, I'm sure September's going to be loaded. I just have a feeling we're going to get slammed in September. Oh, yeah. I feel like this This is funny. In a, in a rare uh, disc memberment, there's more to avoid than there is to purchase. Yeah, this one, so. if you guys skip this whole month, I'm not going to hold it against you. I'm not going to hold it. I mean, well, most yeah, of, if yeah, you think about I, it, most of our picks of the week were even like reissues of stuff you probably already own that you just would have to upgrade yeah. to. So yeah, I don't know. Like I mean, I think there might be two things, uh, two two new ones that I'd probably pick up, and that would like if I had that day, uh, yeah, yeah, held a, you know, uh, held me to like a a definitive thing. I'd probably order Death by Temptation and the uh, Dog Soldiers because I, you know, the the ch- Child's Play. I just don't want to bite into another release that could end up in another box set later on. And I'm yeah, just, yeah, yeah. A, yeah. So yeah, if you guys uh, if you guys want to take a break, or take a vacation from this disc memberment. I'm not going to hold it against you. And we will be back here in September when we start gearing up for Halloween season. I can't believe that's already upon us. Uh, I know, like Spirit of Halloween. Yeah, opened, well, right? I mean, we're already planning a trip to Hallow Scream and Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Yes. So. It's coming up. Yeah, I think we're going to be quick. doing that. Like we're trying to think, right? Like late September. So we'll definitely, uh, as we start planning that, and and you know what that means too. That means already we're gonna we got to start planning our uh, the October horror challenge is is gonna yeah start coming up. But yeah, I mean there's a lot coming up all of a sudden, and we still didn't even get through half our uh, summer's vacation yet. <laughs> this is a crazy year. It is. Us. It's crazy. So we'll see you guys back here next month for our September dismemberment, and of course we invite you to tune into our regular episodes every week. Uh, next week's gonna be a little weird because I'm going on vacation. Uh, Brian went on vacation last week, and I had a crazy work project, so we kind of got behind. Uh, and then uh, next week, I'm going, or this coming week, I'm coming. I'm going on vacation, which is gonna interrupt our recording schedule. So we're gonna just do a little mini sode recap of Brian's vacation for that week, yeah. and then we'll then we'll finally be back on on track and on target. So uh, bear with us as we kind of. Uh, let our vacations interrupt our summer slaycation a bit, but we will get through yeah. all of them. It yeah, we will get through yeah. all of them. Well, technically, summer does not end till September. Yeah. Mid-September. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get them all done before uh, you have to go back to school, I guess. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you back here soon. Bye.